the strong uh, rally in the dollar has obviously put downward pressure, not just the, the pound. The next few weeks are going to be absolutely critical on the stock market and Bitcoin. A few days ago, the British pound dropped to all time lows against the dollar after controversial tax cuts were announced. Following the crash, market data showed that UK investors were increasingly turning to Bitcoin. Crypto fans are saying that the fall of the oldest fiat currency could be a game changer for Bitcoin. To understand the implications of the sterling crisis and its effect on Bitcoin on the short term and the long term, we sat down with Alessio Rastani, a crypto analyst and forex trader. Before we get started, as always, consider leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. I'm Giovanni, your host. Welcome to another Cointelegraph interview. We saw the British pound collapsing at record lows against the US dollar this week after the government announced a controversial tax package that also sparked turmoil in the bond markets. So what do you make of these latest events? Yeah, thanks, Giovanni. Good question. The main driver of this decline in the pound has been the strength in the US dollar. The strong uh, rally in the dollar has obviously put downward pressure, not just the, the pound. We've seen the euro dropping, we've seen gold dropping. Uh, but of course, uh, the pound has seen a bigger uh, decline recently. But I think that's most of it, most of it dr driven by emotion sentiment. I don't believe that there, uh, the cause of this decline was what happened with Liz Truss or the prime minister or her decisions even. Um, again, I actually think that the pound uh, just recently dropped into a capitulation zone or capitulation region. In other words, an area or region where I think we could see a bottom in the British pound. Also, sentiment. I'll give, again, I'll show you the chart of sentiment. Majority of public opinion is very bearish on the pound, extremely bearish. I think levels not seen since 2020 and perhaps um, in 2016 even. So that's another factor which is in the pound's favor. The fact extreme bearishness, pessimism on the pound. Every time this has happened in the past, this has been a turning point, a bullish turning point for the pound. And we are at support. We are at 1985 lows and we're getting very close now to parity on the pound. So there was a very interesting phenomenon this week. After the collapse of the British pound, we noticed a, a spike in the trading volume of the BTC GBP pair, which seems to indicate an increasing um, interest from UK investors towards Bitcoin. So what is your reading of this phenomenon? Do you think yeah. that British investors are dumping their fiat currency to put their uh, investment into Bitcoin. I think it just goes to show the levels of panic in the among traders, among the public. But people seeing the pound collapsing, they're hearing all the news out there about pound, you know, collapsing to, you know, even lower levels. They're panicking and they say they're, they're thinking, oh, OK, the, the money is going to get destroyed. They're going to see devaluation of the currency. And this sentiment and this fear that is spreading among the public and among traders is causing them to ditch the pound and move into something like something that they believe may preserve the value of their uh, assets uh, or the currency. In other words, something like Bitcoin or maybe uh, potentially gold or something like that. So we must say that the pound is not the only loser in this situation. The US dollar is still um, on an upward trend since the beginning of the year against all these currencies like British pound, euro, yen. Um, how long do you think this uh, dollar rally is going to continue and what is going to be its impact on Bitcoin? I think that you're absolutely right. The strength in the US dollar, which again, I, I saw coming last year in, in the summer of last year, um, has put downward pressure. Obviously, the euro trades inverse the dollar and so do many other uh, currencies. Uh, one of them being the British pound and also gold, gold and silver. They are also impacted by the strength in the US dollar. Again, inverse relationship often. So I think the best way to answer the question is to look at the chart of the US dollar, the weekly chart of the dollar. And essentially, again, without a doubt, we're overbought, extremely overbought on every level. But here's what's really interesting about this. Firstly, I'm looking at a weekly chart and we're reaching a trend line resistance a trend line, which if you connect the highs, if we connect the highs of 2009 with the highs of 2015 and the highs of 2016, what we get is a trend line resistance, which is meeting us right now 
Uh, as a matter of fact, we reached that level very recently. I put a blue line, horizontal blue line on my chart. That is the 1618 extension. So if we measure, I, I quite like to use Fibonacci extensions. And there's one extension that I really like. It's called the Golden Ratio 1.618 extension. And these numbers occur in nature, which is why they're so important. If you measure the rally from 2018 to 2020, so if you measure the 2018-2020 rally, and you project that from the lows of 2021, we actually reached that 1618 extension, the golden ratio extension, just recently at 114.77. Okay, that's a key level of resistance. By the way, that's merging now, merging with a trend line resistance, which I have a, a, a purple line on my chart. Okay, and I'll put it there so you, so everyone can see it. So we're reaching two key levels of resistance meeting together. Uh, basically, I think we're reach. My point is that I think we're reaching a very strong level of resistance on the dollar. Now, could it extend higher? Yes, it could. As long as the dollar remains above 110, 111. It's possible the dollar could still extend a bit higher to the 116 to 117 dollar level. That's our 217 level. I beg your pardon, 117, 116 levels on the dollar index. Okay. So as long as the dollar remains above 110, 111, I think we could still see extensions to the 116, 117 level. Once we see a clean break, a sustained break of 111.5 and 110 levels on the dollar index, then I think the top is in for the dollar. And then I'm looking for a multi-month decline in the dollar back to 104 to the 100 level. So what do you think? Is the depreciation of all these currencies against the dollar a net positive for Bitcoin? As far as, the Bitco as, far as Bitcoin is concerned, again, if there are strong bulls, strong um, you know, Bitcoin bulls watching this video, They'll probably say, of course, Bitcoin is going to be a better preservation of your money and wealth. Personally, I'm not convinced. Um, the reason is that we've seen before that Bitcoin can see strong. Again, in a bear market, it can fall, as we've seen before in the past, 70 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent, as happened in previous bear markets. So I don't necessarily think that putting your money into Bitcoin is going to be safer in that respect. Personally, I, I prefer to, in, as a safer bet, I, I, I think gold and silver are better, personally. I guess my own personal uh, perspective. Well, or maybe the dollar itself. Uh, or um, you could argue that, but I don't think the dollar is a safe bet now because I think we're reaching a, a, a likely top in the dollar. So I wouldn't think the dollar is necessarily safe. Personally, I think gold is a safer play right now because once the dollar tops, and I think it will do in the next few weeks, once or even potentially sooner, uh, once the dollar tops and drops, gold is going to blast higher and so will probably silver as well. So I personally feel safer putting my money into gold and silver. Now, could it have a positive impact on Bitcoin too? Yeah, absolutely. I think it could. But uh, we have to wait for the stock market also to, I think the S&P, the stock market also need to show signs of strength because there's a strong correlation between Bitcoin and the stock markets. Yeah, it seems like that as long as the macroeconomic picture doesn't change, we are likely to see a strong recovery in risk on assets. Giovanna, just to make sure, just to make a point about that. You make a very good point. Um, one, one, thing I'm sure you, one thing I'm sure you know, uh, Giovanni, is that sometimes macroeconomic conditions take a while. Uh, in other words, they sometimes lag the market. So sometimes you see price action moving ahead of macroeconomic conditions. Um, there's a chart I'll show you, which I'll, which I'll send to you, uh, and I'm sure you've seen this yourself, Giovanni, which is Bitcoin has a strong correlation also with PMI. Okay, so the PMI no, uh, figures as well. So you're right, macroeconomic conditions, if we see macroeconomic conditions improve, you're correct, Giovanni, we'll see Bitcoin, uh, that will be a better environment for Bitcoin as well. But usually at the S&P and Bitcoin typically bottom before the PMI bottoms and before macroeconomic conditions improve. In the last few weeks, we heard a lot about the risk of a recession. Uh, how, likely, how likely is this possibility and what is going to be the impact uh, on Bitcoin if we are really heading towards a recession? Yeah, I think um, there, there are strong clues that we've already entered the recession. I think you've probably seen those data, that data yourself and probably your, your audience and your viewers have seen that too. I think we're probably very likely already in a recession. A lot of indicators are already showing that. 
Um, we've already seen two um, quarters of negative GDP growth, which also is a li likely indication of a recession. Uh, of course, a recession only gets confirmed of officially by the NBER, but that takes usually months later before they confirm that. But the signs are there. We've already entered a recession. What is not clear is whether this is going to be whether this is going to be a recession similar to the one in 2020, which was very short and quick before the market quickly recover, or whether or are we entering a more prolonged bear market? I think the only opinion that really matters is the stock market. Specifically, I'm talking about the S&P. The S&P is approaching some key support levels. Let's say the, let's say the stock market declines into um, the, the 200 weekly average, again, that's near 3,590, maybe even go to 3,500, 3,400 levels, that, that range, that region. Then let's say we get a bounce, which is normal between late October to December. Let's say we get a bounce or a rally, which I'm also expecting to happen after or if we drop into those levels, uh, the 3,500, 3,400 range. Let's say we get a bounce and that bounce or rally fails. If that bounce or rally fails, and drops back down again, um, then very likely, very likely we're entering a long-term recession and something very close to similar to 2008, okay? Or the year 2000, the dot-com crash. So in other words, what I'm saying is the next few weeks are gonna be absolutely critical on the stock market and Bitcoin, all right? And knowing whether we're heading into a, towards a temporary recession followed by quick recovery or a much more prolonged, sustained recession and bear market, similar to 2008, similar to the year 2000. Okay, so when you talk about a long-term recession, what kind of time frames are we looking at? Is it uh, six months, one year or more? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, for I forget exactly the average period for a recession. Uh, it could be something along the lines of uh, 12 to 18 months. So at least for a year, I mean, this could be something that could last for over, at least going into 2023, 2024. But again, I'm waiting for confirmation by the stock market there. Okay, so final question I'll ask you is, what is your reading of the current situation in the, in the Bitcoin market? What are the key levels of support and resistance we should look at in order to interpret the movements in following weeks and months? As far as the Bitcoin chart is concerned, here's what I'm going to say. Keep it, keeping it simple. Keeping it simple. So that range between 20,400 to 22,400 22, is very important for me, should be very important for everybody watching this about Bitcoin. Because if Bitcoin manages to get above that range, that region of 20,400, 22,400, 22, the September highs, then I think the bottom probably would be in for Bitcoin. All right. So above those levels, then a potential bottom has likely been reached on Bitcoin. However, if Bitcoin continues to remain below those levels, if Bitcoin continues to stay below 22,400 and 20,400 20, in the next few days and weeks, then pressure and the trend still remains to the downside. If Bitcoin now takes out, if Bitcoin takes out 18K in a sustained way, then we're looking at that level near 14K, 13,850 to potentially 12,030, 12,300, okay? And, 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 this is, and this is the final thing I wanna say here, Giovanni. Bitcoin needs to keep above that level. If Bitcoin drops down to that range, um, 12,300, 12,030, or 13,850, it needs to protect that level. It needs to hold that level. Because if it doesn't hold that support, that, that range of support, then um, yeah, it's gonna be very bad for Bitcoin. Uh, but, but my personal viewpoint is, my personal view is if Bitcoin does drop, I think this is more like this is more likely. If Bitcoin does drop to thirteen thousand eight hundred and fifty to a twelve k, I think we're going to hold that level. I think we're going to see a bounce, strong bounce from those levels, potentially even form a bottom from that level as well. Hmm. Okay, so I think that we're going to look very carefully at the movements in the market in the following weeks. As you said, those might turn to be key for understanding how the market will evolve in the next months. So yeah, thanks a lot, Alessio. That was a very insightful conversation. I hope to see you soon on our show so that we can uh, comment on the outcome of your prediction. Thank you, Giovanni. I really appreciate it. And thanks for having me on your program.